Hello and welcome to a very exciting Flora and the Novice Explorers video. Today is Gumby Rufus's first walk in the big wide world. He's all vaccinated and ready to go. Unfortunately for him, it's not quite ideal because it's currently snowing. It's beautiful, but it's a little chilly, so we're going to make this video quite quick. You ready, boy? You ready to enjoy the, the great outdoors with us? Come on. No time like the present. <laughs> What a glorious morning for a walk. So he's been down, he's having a lovely time. I'm slightly concerned about how cold it is on his paws, so I keep picking him up and just making sure that they're not freezing cold and giving him a little rub. Um, but he's getting on really well. And his harness might be a little bit roomy around the shoulders, but it's working rather well. You enjoying yourself, boy? Let's see how far we can go today and not push, push our luck too much with uh, the cold. So whilst we're on today's walk, we're going to be doing a little bit of multitasking. We have been tagged by Mel at Pebbles and Peach in the hashtag positive pandemic tag. So we're going to be sharing our experiences of the lockdowns and kind of looking at it from a slightly more positive angle. So just a little disclaimer, as Mel said in her video, we're not making light of the seriousness of the situation we're all in. I think we're all very aware by now what the pandemic's done to the world. However, we're still keeping a positive outlook and we're looking forward to a time where life returns to normal again and we can get out and explore. Many of you watching also have the same outlook on life, so this is just a bit more of a light-hearted take on the last few months. Question one, restrictions have been lifted. So what's the first thing that you do for fun with friends and family? So for me, I think it's gonna be quite a tame one, really. All I wanna do is have a board game night, <laughs> which doesn't sound very exciting, but that's all we did before we left. And that could be even better if it was down the pub. Very tame, very normal, but that's what I'm missing. Gone are the days where we go and uh, get down on the dance floor in the club. Yeah, even though I'm a very sensual dancer, as Meg calls it. Um. <laughs> sensual. <laughs> and diverting the question over to me very quickly, I would like to have a big, massive dinner party banquet in the garden. Um, barbecue, everyone bring a bit of food and just have a really lovely evening. That's what I want. Question two, what's been your favourite hobby since the lockdowns began? Uh, to be honest, I haven't really been doing very much, but in this lockdown, I have got a new vocation in life and that's puppy training. Um, I'm throwing myself into it, very conscious that I want to make sure that we have the bestest behaved boy ever in the whole wide world and that we can control him when we go on our first few adventures. That's me. And unfortunately, mine is very cliche. I've really gotten into different types of fitness. I don't know, I've started doing a bit more jogging. Um, not to like lose weight or anything, because I, I, ju I, I just don't gain or lose weight. It's, so it's not that, it's just a fitness thing. And something that might surprise long-term viewers is that I've actually been swimming in uh, a reservoir near where we live, in sort of open water. Um, in not too dissimilar weather to this, everyone. Yes, so um, all the haters that were <laughs> hating on me in Sardinia, I'm now just getting in the water. Yes, I'm in a winter wetsuit, which definitely helps, but I've been enjoying it. It's been early mornings, frosty, but we've been swimming in, uh, in the local reservoir. If you are as shocked or as savage as I was on that Sunday morning, please, in the comment section below, add this emoji. Question three. What's the biggest lesson you've learned during the pandemic? The biggest lesson for me was that I realised you can't take anything for granted and I'm definitely guilty of doing that. Even what you would consider simple freedoms um, and just living what was normal life is a very special thing um, and I've really missed that. So I think just the very basic, simple 
human things as well, like human contact. I'm not much of a hug or anything, but even I'm beginning to notice the lack of <laughs> contact with other human beings. Started noticing on like old telly programs when they're getting too close and they're strangers or they're not wearing masks, it's weird. <laughs> Um, but I totally, I totally agree with you, um, be, not being able to go anywhere or plan anything as well, that's just being able to have plans and dreams. Another important thing I think we take for granted as well is the NHS. We are extremely lucky and we are very more, more than aware that they're horrendously under pressure at the moment and um, we need to support them as much as we can. That's another thing I took for granted, just healthcare when yeah. you need it for free, essentially, you know. So yeah, big things, little things, everything's. Yeah. Question four, what's been your favourite book, film or game over the course of the lockdowns? So I must admit, I'm not really a gamer. I've been bought a lovely book for Christmas, but haven't read it yet. Um, and I'm more of a series binger than a film watcher. So I think my answer at the moment would be um, from the sec first lockdown in Sardinia, we watched um, Last Kingdom, which is about Vikings. It's on the BBC. And that was rather good, enjoyed that. But we're series bingers, aren't we? Yeah. Um, we're on Dark at the moment, which is a German um, series, which we've got uh, dubbed in English, which is really good, really interesting, and it keeps you keeps you thinking on on your toes. It's like a more adult version of Stranger Things, I think, yeah. in, a, in a way. Very good. Um, How about you? Well, for me, um, obviously, we really got into audiobooks when we were doing our drives around Europe, a lot of Stephen King, and I've continued that. I'm reading the Dark Tower series at the moment. I think I'm on book three. I'm a very slow reader, but I really do enjoy it. It's just finding the time to actually chill out for a few minutes and do it. So I'm reading, yeah, book three of the Dark Tower series, really enjoying it. Got that on your Kindle? Yes, got it on my little Kindle. Question five. The government has declared the pandemic over and has issued everyone with a holiday voucher of their choosing. So where are you going and why? So for me again, quite a normal answer, nothing too exotic for me. I think I'd really love to go back to Scotland. Uh, we definitely didn't do it justice and it is, um, one of the first places we're going to go when it's safe to do so, to be honest. Yeah, and so that's one end of the spectrum where you're being very cheap and cost effective for the government. I'm going to push the boat out and go New Zealand. We'd love to probably leave Flora at home for that one, but hire a van and do both islands for as long as we can um, and just really soak up what that place is all about. And we could also do the Lord of the Rings tour. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing is though, got a small issue, four-legged friend. We could, we could smuggle him, couldn't we? <laughs> and finally, question number six. Forget COVID, it's a full-blown zombie virus and you can choose two people to be in your survival team. They can be fictional or actual real-life celebrities. Who are you choosing? <laughs> Who are you choosing? So, I'm trying to think of who would be really handy for this. So, talking fictional, I'm going to go Uhtred of Beb and Burr, which is from The Last Kingdom. Fate is all. Um, because I think that he will just be a killing machine and he can plan stuff. Plus he's sexy. Um, excuse me? <laughs> and then another option. Say who you said and I'll, I'll argue with you because I don't right. understand you. I want to go for Rob Greenfield because he has spent a year living off fruit and vegetables that he's planted. He does live in Florida, to be fair, not in England. He is, he is real. He um, is real but, and he's very placid. I, I'm sure he's got a lot of knowledge. But, but then once we've defeated the zombies, I think it'd be really helpful to actually feed us and actually like build stuff. All right, another option would be Guy Martin because I think he'd be really good at the mechanical stuff and building stuff <laughs> and like siphoning diesel from unused yeah. cars I and finding do, gas. He might do your head in after a while. Yeah, yeah, all right, Chief. All right, Chief. Yeah, but <laughs> I like him a lot and I think we could be good mates actually. But if you don't want to be in this friendship circle, then I that's can't. absolutely fine. I can't be because I'm in my own. And that is fictional character. I'm going with the gunslinger out of the Dark Tower books that I referenced earlier. He's got deadly accuracy with a gun and he's pretty ruthless. <laughs> That's uh, cocking it. Pew, pew, pew. And 
I'd also probably go with some chef, celebrity chef, um, to cook up all the rotting zombie meat I'll probably be eating. Because you'll you'll have your little like pasture and all like your veg growing and I'll be just eating old corpses, I think. <laughs> And after that, I think it's time that we descend back to the caravan. Little Rufus is absolutely knackered. He's had a big day out today. Yes, very exciting. He's walked quite a bit. We have been picking him up um, just to make sure his paws aren't getting too cold and to just give him a cuddle, basically. So we'll march down. He looks like he's going to have a snooze in my jumper and get to the warm caravan. I'll tell you what, though, it might look cold, but that sun is really quite nice. Beautiful. Really lovely day to come out, actually. I'm glad we did it. Timed it very well. Come on then, Chief. <laughs> We've got bloody Chief. Cheers. We made it successful. We've been outside for about three hours on... Uh... You're flying low, really quite largely. <laughs> it's all right. I'll fix that, but I'm not going to walk back into shot again. So yeah, we've been outside for about three hours with Rufus on his very first walk, yep. and he has really enjoyed it. And he has now collapsed in front of the uh, where the hot air gets blown out for the gas heating system. He's just out for the count now, which is quite nice. So I can do stuff this afternoon without <laughs> having my hands bitten. So once again, we'd like to thank Mel for the tag. She's always very clever with her initiatives and actually creating them and getting everybody to do things together, which is rather lovely. So thank you, Mel. Hope you're keeping well. It's also been a nice little exercise to reflect on things we are grateful for, what's yeah. happened and what we're looking forward to coming up as well. So it's a nice little um, light-hearted way of doing it, I think. Yeah. Which brings us on to passing it along, because that's what tagging's all about. Yes, so we are going to nominate Fantastic Travelling, Leon and Meek. We're also going to tag in the Fitness Forest, that's uh, Jenny and Dean. And we're also going to tag Travel Beans, which is Alex and Emma. If you'd like to participate, feel free to answer the six questions and do your own little video. All the questions will be down below, as will everyone's channel links as well. Um, but if you want to do it and you haven't been tagged, just feel free to tag, tag along. Yeah, get involved and do it. You don't have to wait, you don't have to be patient. At the end of the day, it's all just a bit of fun. There's absolutely no pressure at all. But um, if you do it, let us know. So we hope that there is something that you have found positive somewhere in this pandemic watching at home we know it's been quite difficult for people um mentally physically financially um so at no point during this video do we ever want to take away from how much it's impacted different people so don't get us wrong yes thank you very much for watching again keep safe and keep sane and we'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>